So now the question is, okay, having defined these things, right? Can I quantify how much of noise I can add to this guy so that I to this logic gate, right? That we have with, with the definition as we have done now, right? How much of noise can I add and still be sure that my output will be propagated correctly? Okay, so for this, what we will do is we will take the most common operation that we want to do in any circuit actually is to cascade two of them. Okay, drive one with the other. So I have two inverters I1, I2. Okay, and uh, let me copy this voltage transfer characteristic again. Okay, so here is my voltage transfer characteristic and what is going to happen now is um, maybe I can remove all this. Yeah. So, we just have um, yes. So, we just have VIH, VIL, uh, VOH and VOL here, okay. So, let us assume that I give VIL as my input to I1, okay. What will be the output of I1 from this curve here, voltage transfer characteristic, you know the output should be VOL of I1. Okay, maybe I also draw this guy a little far away so that I have some space. Now, VIL is the limit of your logic low. Anything below that, there is no problem. So, the limit is we want this input to be treated as a logic, um, sorry, if I will get VOH here. So, if I give VIL to inverter I1, I will get the output as VOH as shown in this curve. So, you give this input, I will get this output, okay. Now, I want VOH, okay. Remember, VOH is not VDD. It is something lower than VDD, okay. But I want VOH to be treated as a logic high, okay, for inverter I2. So, I2 has its own voltage transfer characteristic which is exactly the same as I1, okay. So, I want VOH to be treated as a logic high for inverter I2. Now, what is the range for I2 such that the input can be treated as a logic high? if the input is greater than VIH, okay. So, therefore, VOH should be greater than VIH of this inverter. So, so if you look at what we have here, okay, for inverter I2, you have ground 0, you have VDD, you have VDD by 2, this is the halfway mark, okay. Around this, we have defined two things, VI, VIL and VIH. This is your VIL, VIH, okay. Now, what I want is my VOH of inverter I1 inverter I1 is driving the output to VOH. I want that to be recognized as a logic high for inverter I2, okay. So, if you look at this, uh, I will maybe draw this in magenta, right. VOH is somewhere here, okay. And therefore, how much of noise can I add to the output of I1 
so that it is still recognized as a logic high this much of noise. I can lower V O H as low as V I H right and still ensure that I too treats that as a logic high. Okay. Therefore, the noise margin high equals V O H minus V I H. It means even if the V O H fell by the noise margin, you would still only hit V I H and you are guaranteed that the inverter I 2 will still treat it as a logic high. Likewise, if you gave V I H here, you would get, I uh, will draw it in red, V O L here for inverter I 1, right? You give V I H, you will get V O L, okay? Likewise, I will write this in magenta, V O H, yeah, okay? Now, what do I want? V O L, remember, is closer to ground, okay? So, this is where V O L is. Now, I want this V O L of I 1 to be recognized by I 2 as a logic low. For that to happen, V O L must be less than V I L. How much? By how much? By this much. So, the noise margin low equals V I L minus V O L. Right? Now, let me give you an, it is also important to get a feel for this. Okay? So, typically in a circuit, okay, in a, in a CMOS circuit for example, if V D D is 1.8 volt, okay, then your V D D by 2 by the way is obviously 0.9 volt. What are your V I H and V I L values that you will get? V I H will be 0 0.93 volt, V I L will be 0 0.87 volt. Typical examples I am giving you, just to give you a feel. Okay. So, if you look at it, the intermediate region, right, the the in indeterminate region that is VIH minus VIL is how much? It is only 60 millivolts, 930 minus 870. So, VIH minus VIL equal to 60 millivolts. Okay? And what is the signal swing? 0 to VDD is 1800 millivolt, 1.8 volt. If you multiply by 1000, 1800 millivolt. Of that, only 60 millivolt is an indeterminate region. Anything below 0.87 volt is treated as, uh, you know, logic low. Anything above 930 millivolt is treated as logic high. Only this inter inter intermediate 60 millivolt is indeterminate and cannot be considered as either logic 0 or logic 1. Okay. So, effectively what you see now is that the uh, uh, noise margins, right, are actually very high, okay. So, if you take for example, the NMH, okay, this is abbreviated as NMH and this is abbreviated as NML, okay. Clearly from the, from the curve, you can see that, you know, VOH and VOL are actually almost rails, right? So, if you look at the noise margin, if you say VOH is VDD, right? Nearly VDD, right? And you take this example, 
Okay, let us take this example. I can approximate VOH as VDD and VOL as ground. Suppose you did this, okay, it implies the noise margin hi is how much is VOH minus VIH that is uh, VDD minus 930 millivolt. So, how much is this 1800 minus 930 uh, what 870 millivolt? Uh, 870 yes okay likewise nml is v i l minus v o l okay and we already know that v o l is uh, can be approximated as ground okay if you approximate this okay if you do this then the noise margin low is going to be uh, VIL which is basically uh, 870 millivolt minus 0. So, you actually have 870 millivolt of noise available that margin available for the digital circuit to work absolutely perfectly. So, 870 millivolt is nearly half the supply voltage and therefore, there is no way that uh, you know the digital circuit is likely to malfunction because of noise. Okay? And that is the reason digital circuits are absolutely so popular across uh, you know the, the microprocessors have just become uh, uh, omnipresent, they are they're just everywhere, right? Your mobiles, your desktops, your uh, laptops, and so on, servers, simply because of this one reason of robustness, okay? So, uh, now given like you know various kinds of voltage transfer characteristics, you should basically be able to uh, identify and analyze where the noise margin should be, you know, where the VIH and VIL should be okay? and uh, the assignments will also reinforce many of these concepts. Right? So, uh, with that introduction, I will sort of you know, we will we'll wind up the discussion on what these voltages actually mean. Okay? We are now very clear about what the voltage means in the digital domain and how signals are propagated. So, one beautiful thing about uh, you know I uh, these digital signals right is because of this noise margin property okay, you just take the same old case I1 I mean this is I1 I2 okay, and let us say you gave 0 volt you add a 20 millivolt noise nothing happens you will get back 5 volt here. 0 volt here and gone. So, even if you add noise here, the output is restored to logic levels, complete logic levels the moment you go to the output of that inverter and from I2's output onwards. So, even if I have other set of inverters like this, it does not matter I3, I4 and so on. So, only at one place you can add noise and that noise immediately gets killed. Okay, and voltage levels and logic levels are restored immediately after that. Okay. On the other hand, if you did this to an analog signal, the noise effect of noise would cascade from that point onwards all the way to the end. Right? So, this is the key difference between the analog computation and digital computation and uh, also you know helps us appreciate that the voltages we are talking about in digital domain is not just 0 or 5 volts, it is actually a range of voltages which is determined by all the discussion that we did in this, these couple of lectures. So, in the next lecture we will move on to the mathematical framework 
of uh, digital computation. Thank you.